Well, um, today we're going to do something a little different than we normally do. Um, we're going to just look at some of the things and some of the uh, ways in which God has been working in our church and through our church and um, in your life through you, because you guys are the church, right? Uh, and I think that, that that's one of those things that oftentimes we don't talk about enough, is that um, because of you, uh, there's been some great things that God has done uh, this year, and we get to celebrate together. And so we're going to talk about some of that stuff today. And uh, if you're joining with us online, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, those of you who uh, chose to be here in person, I just want to give a special thanks for that, because I think there is something special about that on the last Sunday of the year, for you guys to take time out of your weekend. It's a holiday weekend, all of those things, and be here. Uh, it's special to me, and, uh, and I think um, it hopefully will be special to you as well to hear some of these great things. Um, but uh, as we kind of look, I, I want to do this in the most authentic way possible, and uh, as we take a look back, and, and there are um, always uh, good things to look back on and celebrate, and yet there's also always some like not so good stuff. You guys realize that? I don't know if you guys know that the church isn't perfect. Did you guys know this? I don't know if you knew this or not. Uh, but, uh, but there's also some unperfect and not perfect things that happen. And, and it, honestly, in my mind, I, I want to talk about some of those things because I think it makes it more authentic. Um, as opposed to just coming up here and just talking about all of the good stuff, I, I want to take a second to address some of the negative stuff. Uh, because it, it also shows God's faithfulness that he's still at work in the midst of our mess because <laughs> it is messy being a part of the church and being a church and I think that that's uh, really important and unfortunately, um, you know, there are things that we have to begin to mourn and lament together and the Bible talks about this. It talks about us mourning things and lamenting things um, and doing that as a community. And, and I think that there are plenty of those things to uh, talk about. Um, many of you may even already know this. Some of you may not know this. And if you don't know this, it's okay. Uh, don't feel like you're left out of the loop here. Um, but it just may be because you're newer than some other folks. But uh, many of you who have been around for the last five years since I've been here know the difficulty that this year has brought. And, um, and it's been especially difficult just because we've lost several families who were deeply rooted and committed to our community along the way in 2023. And it's been very, very sad to see uh, these families leave our community. And uh, for me personally, it's been sad. And, um, and I think it's been sad uh, for a number of you as well, I'm sure. Um, I, don't, I don't know all the reasons why people have, have left. Um, and I don't understand all of the um, issues that go into all of that. That's not really all that important to me. To me, it's just sad because I feel like some of our community is gone. Um, and uh, it, the Bible talks about the church being a body. It talks about it being a body of many members who all play a specific role into making the body stay healthy and strong. And when you lose members of the body, it hurts the body. It becomes difficult for the body. And I think God has been super faithful in the midst of all of that, which we're going to talk about. But I think, um, I think I'd, be, I'd be lying if I didn't say there are some days that it feels like um, our body is, is falling apart a little bit and is a little bit unhealthy at times. And, uh, and it's that we're trying to nurse it back to health. And um, that's the way it feels sometimes. Uh, but... Um, I do think we are seeing God at work, and I do think God is helping us uh, grow and become more healthy. I want to just be honest and say I have seen more and more people uh, from our church uh, who a year ago were not connected, not plugged in, not doing anything, 
uh, engaged and leading and serving and doing so much stuff. There are, there are new families that are getting connected to the community. There are families who have a deep love and a passion for spiritual formation and discipleship, which is a huge part of our vision and our mission here at Lake Springs that are becoming a part of the fold. There are, there are uh, great groups of people who are coming here uh, because they love and they, are, they, they want a church that has diversity in every way, whether that's that's ethnic or generational. Um, it doesn't matter. Like they want diversity. And so we're seeing these things take place. We're seeing so many people get involved in Bible studies and life groups um, and commit to serving and being a part of heart and soul. We have just seen an unbelievable amount of generosity um, throughout this year. Uh, we have seen people growing deep, abiding, intimate relationship with Jesus that they didn't have previously. They went to church, they came to church, they were a part of church, but now they're, they're, they have a relationship with the, the God of the universe, and they talk to God like a friend. That's a really powerful, powerful testimony, and uh, I think that that's a great sign of health in a church. And we're becoming a church that's less concerned about programs and the programs that we offer from a week-to-week -week basis and more concerned about loving people into life change. And that's really our hope. That's really our heart. We, we do programs, and we think programs are helpful, but our programs are never the main thing that we are about. We're about changing people's lives and loving people into life change. And so we are less concerned with bottom line numbers, less concerned with attendance and offering and what does that look like. And we're more concerned about how many people are taking next steps and growing as disciples of Jesus. Amen. That's our heart. That's our heart. And that, to us, is the most valuable metric of success that we can gauge. And there has definitely been that happening at Lake Springs Church in 2023. And so God has been with us and been doing great things. And this is largely due to the fact that we have a church that's led by a great group of men and a great group of elders. Um, they are some of the most intelligent, well-read biblical scholars I know. They also are humble as I've ever met in the church. They love people so well. They love this church and this community so well. And they aren't perfect men, but they truly deserve a lot of honor and they deserve a lot of respect for the way that they live their lives and serve King Jesus. That is the kinds of men that we have here, and that is such a blessing, and that is a major, major reason why we have the success we have and are, are experiencing the things that, that we are experiencing, the growth that we are experiencing. And although we don't look at a traditional metric of success uh, as our main area of identifying health, we do still keep track of numbers, and we do still keep track of what that says and what that means and all of that kind of stuff because it is a gauge of our effectiveness. And so, uh, so I want to share some of these numbers with you, all right? So uh, in 2023, in spite of losing about 70 people over the last year, uh, God is building his church. Our average attendance went from 177 uh, in 2022 to 182 in 2023. Now, if you know like the story that goes along with that, you can just go like, when I saw that number, I was like, no freaking way. <laughs> That's amazing. Like, God has been doing so much. He's growing his church, and it might be incremental, but he is growing his church in spite of extreme, extreme difficulty and struggle at times. And I was surprised. I was just, like, blown away that that is something that we can report um, in 2023. Such a beautiful thing. Through, through November of 2023, let me give you a, a few financial numbers. We were $48,465.82 over our budgeted giving. That's amazing. You guys have done so much and been so generous and given so um, sacrificially to our church in order that we can do amazing, amazing ministry and work. And, um, and we were, we were $23,107.38 in the black 
um, as of last month, which is incredible. That includes uh, even spending money on two things that we didn't budget for, large purchases to uh, upgrade our facility, uh, $15,000 that we put into these upper rooms that we added to this building, and then another $25,000 that we put into a new playground that should be installed at the beginning of 2024. And so we've, we've spent $40,000 that wasn't budgeted because we had the ability to because of your generosity, and, and you have allowed us to do more and more things and make um, our church uh, a better place. Um, we went from having three full-time equivalents as far as uh, staff and payroll to having four full-time equivalents uh, before the end of the year, and our preschool is operating with a $15,000 surplus at the end of the year as well, which is just an amazing uh, testimony of God's faithfulness in that regard, um, and, and so God's just been doing great things through you guys and through your generosity, and I just want to just say thank you so much for uh, what you've been doing. In 2023, we also had nine baptisms, uh, nine people who made a decision to put their faith in, in, in Jesus and follow him, uh, and uh, that's, that's two more than we had in 2022. So uh, God's even growing the impact that we're having in people's lives of people coming to faith, and there has been growth in almost every significant category of our church over the last year. It's really, really Powerful, And because of your generosity, we gave over $40,000 to missions this year um, to, to support missions around our area, but also around the world in places like India and Southeast Asia. And uh, our next most significant investment into ministry was that we were able to spend uh, around $35,000 in formation and discipleship to help people grow in their faith and take next steps to be and follow Jesus, be with and follow Jesus. Uh, more closely. Uh, and I'm going to give you a percentage breakdown of how our budget kind of broke out at the end of the year. So uh, our staff was uh, took up 47% of our budget, facilities was 16% of our budget, missions 11% of our budget, formation and discipleship was 8%, office and admin 6%, worship ministry 4%. Family ministry, uh, 2%, hospitality and evangelism, 2%, heart and soul, 2%, and all other things uh, made up the rest, 2% of the budget. Uh, as of G uh, November 30th, our statement of financial position says that in cash, we have $168,296.54 uh, in, our, in our accounts. Uh, and then we have uh, in other assets and equity around $2 million, which means that our total financial uh, position is $2.168 million in cash, assets, and equity. Can you praise God for that? That is just an amazing... Amazing, amazing thing. <clears throat> as our, our church, if you don't know this, like as Lake Springs Church, we started with zero dollars in the bank, and uh, we started with zero dollars in the bank in May, in May of 2022. It's been less than two years, and this is what God is doing and has done. It's an amazing, amazing thing. And so all throughout 2023, even though it was a really, really tough year, especially for me and Mallory personally, um, we can't help but look back and think of how great the faithfulness of God has been and how he has been at work and how he has been faithful to us. And, uh, and I honestly just want to say from M Mallory and I personally to you, um, just want to say, man, we have felt so loved and so supported. Um, by you guys, and thank you so much, and are glad that we get to celebrate these God wins together. We get to celebrate some of these things that God is doing um, in our midst as a church. But I also want to take some time today to talk about a few things that I feel like uh, that, that we are, we're planning to try and push into in 2024 and beyond. Um, and uh, and so some of this stuff is even scary for me to even voice and share. Some of it's really exciting, and it's already taking place and happening. But, uh, but some of it's just like, man, we're just dreaming, and we're hoping that maybe you guys will dream with us, you know? So, um, so here's, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to kind of break down a few things. The first thing is I've been working on a project 
for about the last two years. And I started this project in February of, uh, of 2022, and, uh, and I'm excited to put it in your hands as soon as it gets released. So I just recently finished writing my first book, and, uh, and hopefully it will release in the first quarter of 2024. And, uh, and so uh, I'm excited to get that into your hands and so you guys can read it. It's a really exciting thing. It took a lot of time and a lot of energy, a lot of effort, a lot of study. And, uh, and I'm excited to, to let you guys uh, take it and read it. Uh, second, we are going to uh, be going on our first international mission trip in February of 2024. Uh, myself and five others will be traveling over to India to visit with one of our mission partners, and it's going to be really exciting to be able to see what God's doing through our church <laughs> that far away, right? It's just going to be a really cool thing to see the impact that you guys are making and that we are making as a community around the world, and so I'm really excited about that. Um, we are also, we're growing in our commitment to Second Home Support Network, uh, foster and adoptive families that are supported in our area around the Triangle, partnering with them to provide families with much needed supplies and products. So uh, a couple of these rooms up here in the worship center are going to be used as a, a storage uh, closet for care items that are going to be given to these families uh, whenever they get a placement. So the way foster the foster system works is a lot of times foster parents will get a placement just kind of out of the blue and they don't know what's coming and they need a place to get supplies and get things for the children that are being placed in their homes and we're going to have a place where they can come free of charge and find those supplies and get what they need for their kids. It's going to be really, really cool, and we're going to give you more uh, ways in which you can be a part of that and be involved with that as we get into the new year, but just know that that's coming this year, and that's a really exciting thing. Another thing we're doing with them is we're going to be doing a parents' night out for foster parents and adoptive parents to be able to bring their children to the church and know that their children are cared for and safe and loved, and they get to go out and have a date night. Uh, some of you guys have experienced that here at our church uh, as we've given parents' nights out to, to our church, but we're going to do that uh, for these foster and adoptive families as well, and so this is just a great opportunity to just serve and love on people, and, uh, and also, um, there is this hope uh, that, that we will continue to grow and become a more diverse, multi-ethnic uh, church body. Um, we really desire our church to look like heaven, uh, and when we get to heaven, we're going to be every tribe, every tongue, every nation. And we want everyone to see the church growing to truly love and appreciate the beauty that is found in the different cultures and different ethnicities that we have. Just in our small community of Holly Springs, we live in one of the most transient areas in the country where people from all over the world, not just all over the United States, but all over the world, come and make their home here. And so we have a great opportunity to pour into and be a more diverse community. We also des desire um, that, that we develop uh, diverse relationships uh, amongst even diverse ages uh, in, in um, ge or, or demographics of people. It's really easy. Uh, it's easy for me and it's easy for most of you to connect with people who look like us and who sound like us and who are in the same stage of life that we are in. And yet it's a much, I think, more beautiful thing to connect with people who aren't just like us, don't look just like us, and don't just find themselves in the same stage of life because there's something to be gained from that relationship that it cannot be gained any other way. It cannot be gained any other way. And so there's this uh, opportunity for what we're calling tabling. And so in 2024, we're going to try and create these environments uh, called tabling. And essentially, tabling is just a fancy way to say we're going to try and get diverse people together around tables to spend time together having deep and, and, and meaningful conversations about church, about God, and about just life in the world. And so um, we're looking forward to these opportunities and making ways for these opportunities. We are also... Um, going to be trying to partner with our brothers and sisters in, uh, in an Espanol community uh, that David and Vasti are a part of right now called Esperanza Church, and, uh, and we're going to try and have more multi-ethnic worship services together, more bilingual worship services together, and things like that in the new year. And we're really excited about just the amazing opportunity that we have 
to just be and, and grow in this way because we believe that this is, this is what heaven's gonna look like. Uh, and Jesus says we should pray that heaven would come here on earth, right? So, so we might as well shoot for it. And this is one way we can do that. And so uh, I'm really excited about all of these things. But I also wanna share one more vision. And so these are all things, those things that I just listed are all things that are already happening, are already taking place, are already plans that we have. But now I want to I share a vision with you that is just a dream and is just a vision because um, I've been thinking about this, I've been praying about this for several months, and, uh, and I brought our elders into this uh, process, and this is not something that we are committed to doing, just so you guys know. We are not committed to doing this yet. The, our elders and I, we are, we're taking a really long time and to go through a discernment process and trying to discern together uh, and figure out if this is something we should do or not. But this is something that we feel like God is leading us to at least discern and try and figure out if this is his will for our church. And so we are praying and we are trying to discern uh, if God might be calling our church or leading our church to open a Christian school here in the heart of Holly Springs. And... Um, uh, I, that's even scary for me to voice because it's the first time I've said it out loud uh, to, to a larger group of people than like three or four. So, um, and, 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 there's, and there's a reason why. Uh, when I began studying, uh, you guys will remember our, uh, our cultural moment series that uh, I did back earlier in the fall. When I began studying for that, um, I began looking at a lot of statistical analysis and statistical data on what is the trend of Christianity in America and also what's the trend in the next generation. About 56% of millennials and Gen Zs um, call themselves Christians. Okay, so 56%. That's the lowest percentage of, 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 of a generation to call themselves Christian at any point in time in human history, or at least since at least Jesus, you know, rose from the dead. So, you know, basically human history. Um, so, so they, but, but it's the lowest it's ever been. Out of that 56%, only 10% of those would be considered what would be called resilient disciples. Resilient disciples of Jesus. Meaning that they have a deep, intimate, abiding relationship with Jesus that's like founded on a biblical worldview. They're committed and connected to the church. They're invested in making their life matter and their work matter for the kingdom, not just, they don't just show up at church on Sundays. And there's this, there's just this immense uh, thing that I found out in some of the study that pointed to this was that one of the major reasons for this 10% and their resilient discipleship is because many of this 10% grew up in Christian education or went to a Christian college. And that what it did is it built in this biblical worldview and this Christian formation in a much, va like, much vaster way than just being able to attend a church on a Sunday morning or being a part of a church and its programs. And so it began to kind of stir in my heart um, as I began to realize this, and I began to think about this, like, what is going on? Well, no joke, about, about two weeks after I really began thinking about this and praying through this, uh, the state of North Carolina passed a law called the Opportunity Scholarship. And I don't know if you guys know about the Opportunity Scholarship, but it essentially enables every family to apply for government funding in order to send their children to a private school of their choice. <clears throat> And so every single, every single family in the state of North Carolina can receive funding in order to send their child to a private school. What if that private school also built in Christian formation? I mean, there's just so many things that have kind of like opened up. Right after I got back from a retreat where I really kind of like, that kind of opened my, God opened my eyes in a moment of solitude to say like, oh God, like that's a bigger vision than I'm ready for. Uh, which is when you know God is speaking. When God's vision is bigger than your vision, that, that's when you know he's speaking. And when, when I heard that, no joke, I came home the next day, I was playing in a charity golf tournament with a head of a private school. It's crazy stuff. And so I just began like looking at the signs and thinking, man, like this seems like something we need to at least consider and at least pray about. 
Because in Holly Springs, there is, there, there is not a private Christian school in the, in the city or in the town. And this is a place where I really believe, given our demographics and given our, uh, our center location here in the community and in the city, we have a great opportunity to make a really, a true, true impact. Not just, not just in like the lives of us, but in the lives of our town and in the lives of families in our town in lives of people in this city. And so i just throwing that out there. Again, this is not something we're fully committed to uh, because there's a lot of external factors that have to uh, be worked through. The first thing is, is that um, in order to do this, we would have to expand our property and expand our facilities uh, and go, undergo a major, major renovation. Uh, in, in which means we would have to raise the funds in order to do that, which would cost us about $5 million. Uh, this likely will mean that uh, we will have to also find temporary space in order to meet while that renovation and that expansion takes place uh, for at least a few months, if not much longer than that. And there are lots of other potential impact as well that we have no d idea about because we aren't that smart. Uh, <laughs> we just have a dream. Um, and and um, and there's also, I mean, guaranteed spiritual warfare. Whenever you're trying to take ground for the kingdom, you can guarantee the enemy is not going to want that to happen. And so, um, so we really need a lot of prayer and a lot of uh, a lot of help uh, trying to discern if this is something that God is doing in and through Lake Springs Church. Uh, I told you guys I was in a time of solitude, um, and, uh, and in that time of solitude, it was also a time when I was studying through the book of Mark, and um, that particular day where God kind of opened my eyes and gave me a vision that was bigger than mine, this was the passage that I opened up to right after that, like literally right after it. I was like, all right, I'm just going to open the Bible. And I'm just going to sit with Jesus. I'm going to read. And I just got to the next thing that I had on the docket for, the, for, for like the next section that I was supposed to read. And this is what it said. It's Mark 9, verse 42. It says, if anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. That was the verse that I came to as soon as I got done hearing from God saying, I think maybe you should start a Christian school. I was like, oh, I don't think I want to. <laughs> That's literally how I felt. Like I, like I, I felt like God, God said that. I was like, I don't, I don't want to run a school. And I, and I don't. But, he say, but I, think, I think there's a way in which I don't have to run a school. And the church doesn't even have to run a school. And we still might be able to have a Christian school here for the community and for the city and for this people. So anyway, this is just something that I feel like God is, is working in. But again, we need prayer. And so I'm gonna ask you to pray uh, for three things. First one is wisdom. Uh, we need wisdom. We want wisdom. We wanna have as much wisdom as possible. We wanna be able to dot all the I's we can dot and cross all the T's we can cross. All of that stuff is really, really good because wisdom is really, really uh, the key to making good decisions, uh, but it also scary decisions and risky decisions, uh, which is why we needed to pray that we would also have courage. It's because this is risky and this is scary, and so we need you to pray for wisdom. We need you to pray for courage, courage that we can do the right thing, especially if it's not going to be easy or even popular. We need, we need courage to still do the right thing. <laughs> And the third thing, and maybe the most important, is that we would have unity. Unity. There's nothing, I don't think, more powerful in the kingdom than a church that is unified. Than a group of people who are joined together, headed in the same direction for King Jesus. And that was Jesus' hope. He had this prayer for his disciples. As he was about to head to the cross, he prayed that they would be one as he and the Father is one. There is so much important work uh, that, there, that we have to do as followers of Jesus for God and his kingdom, and there is a lot of personal growth that we need to achieve in our own lives as well, but a house divided against itself will not stand. And so we must be unified no matter what if we decide, um, 
And whatever we decide, if we are going to be um, effectively able to discern and do the will of God moving forward. And so we don't know what that is. We're trying to discern what that is. But we need, we need prayer uh, for those three things to help us gain wisdom, have courage, and be unified together. So lots of stuff, lots of good stuff, lots of potentially amazing things that God could do, but um, just have to wait and see, right? Have to wait and see. One thing that I want to do uh, to close out our time today, or at least my time with you today, um, so we're going to worship a little bit more as well, is I want to take you through a practice of prayer called the prayer of examine. And this is a great time to do it. It's at the end of the year, so there's a perfect time to do the prayer of examine. If you don't know what the prayer of examine is, it's a prayer that was developed a few hundred years ago. Um, and essentially, it's a, it's a prayer that, that are, you're, you're um, kind of called into praying daily at the end of each day. Uh, it's a prayer to remember. It's a prayer of repent. It's an re- opportunity to request and also an opportunity to resolve. And so I want to just walk us through Psalm 90 together uh, for just a second and, uh, and just spend some time in the quiet um, walking through this prayer, all right? So the first part of this prayer is that we're going to remember. We're going to remember. So in Psalm 90, if you want to turn there, you can, or the words will be on the screen. But in Psalm 90, verse 1, it says this. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. We just need to take a minute to just remember this, to just sit with this truth, that from before we could even think or imagine, God has been God. And he who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's just take a moment to pause and just sit with God and remember and pray that prayer. God, you alone are God. So free us from the the striving and the desire to control. Free us from the desire to be our own gods. Point our eyes in your direction that we may only bow down to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The second part of this examine prayer is to repent. And so for this, we'll go to verse 11 through 13 of Psalm 90, which says, If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath, it is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. I just invite you to take a a few moments just to sit with that, to sit with the truth that we can come back to him and ask for mercy and ask for forgiveness. We can repent because he's been faithful And he took the wrath that we deserved upon himself.
Father, forgive us for forgetting how great our sin was. That the full wrath of God was laid on the shoulders of Jesus on the cross. In order that we might know your righteousness and live and have your freedom. God, forgive us when we get too far ahead of ourselves. We forget to number our days and we forget that we are just a mist, a vapor. That we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Lord, have mercy on us, sinners. In Jesus' name, amen. As we begin to make our requests known to God, Psalm 90, verse 14 says, satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants and your splendor to your children. There's a lot of things we could ask for. We could request from God, but maybe few are as beautiful as knowing his unfailing love and finding joy to be able to sing all of our days, to know his deeds and know his splendor. So may we just come before God asking for more of that today. Father, we pray that 2024 is the best year yet. That we know your unfailing love. That we experiencing it day in and day out will find joy to be able to sing of your greatness and your faithfulness and your beauty and your splendor. God, show us your glory. Reveal it to us every day. And may we not miss it. Give us hearts to see you for who you are and give you praise. We ask for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. To resolve this prayer, verse 17 says, May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes. Establish the work of our hands. There's a time where we have to realize that God is the one who does the work. And if we are going to be at all successful, he must be at work in our life and through our life. And so we ask that he establish the work of our hands. And we give him everything and say, you do it. You make it happen. You build what you want to build through me this year. Let's pray that together. God, we resolve this prayer to say, may your will be done. May your kingdom come. 
here on earth as it is in heaven. May your will be done and may your kingdom come here in Holly Springs as it is in heaven. God, establish the work of our hands. Let your mighty power come and shine in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen.